Um, how y'all doing today? We doing good, mm-hmm. brother. Mm-hmm. How you doing today? I'm thankful for y'all joining in with us tonight on conference call in person and on live. Um, tonight I'll be reading from Psalms 123. I'll be reading from the New Living. I thought you told us you was doing it all. I lift my eyes to you, O oh God, and thought in heaven. We keep we keep looking to the Lord our God for his mercy, just as servants kept their eyes on their master. As a slave girl watches her mistress, her mistress, her mistress for the slightest sign. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. For we have our full of contempt. We have more than our fill of our scuffering of the of, of the pride and the contempt of the ignorant. I just read from I just read Psalms one twenty three, the entire. I read from New Living Translation. Amen. Um. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Conference call, how are you? God bless you. Good to hear your voices. We thank God for all of you that are in live and in person here. And uh, we thank God for all of you all that are watching us on the live stream. Amen. So we had a wonderful time last week. We didn't stop what we do um, as we were in Macomb, Mississippi at the Christian Baptist Fellowship International Conference, annual conference. And we had a fantastic time there. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. And um, you know, um, I've said this, We've had, uh, this was our third one. Um, It was by far the best. I don't care what denomination, what reformation, what fellowship, what organization, it doesn't matter. And listen, I'm not talking about anybody else because I don't know what they do. I'm talking about, I've attended some others. This was the best I've ever attended. Yes. Not because of the attendance, which we had good attendance. I said this on Sunday. Not because of the awesome dynamic preaching, which we did have. I'm saying that it was the best because it met the needs of its people. Amen. Mm -hmm. That it did. It did. It really did. 
So I'm thankful uh, for all of you who uh, joined in with us as we were. Um, everybody else shut down their Bible study. Now, we had our Bible study, and you all watched us. <laughs> Amen. So um, it was good. We had a grand time. The Holy Spirit had his way, and we went with it. Amen. Amen. So we are going to continue on with the doctrine of salvation. Amen. Amen. The doctrine of salvation. Now, those of you all who are watching us on the live stream here, if you message us, we will make sure that you have a copy of this syllabus that we are all using. Yeah, we actually use syllabuses here because I want you to be able to take with you um, what we are going over so you can read it further. Amen. And we are a context church. We get the verses in context. We don't run with a cliche verse and, 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 and run the 100 yard dash with it or the 100 meter dash. <laughs> and then, but um, we try to get the full counsel of the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So um, I'm not going to be going back over it, you know, so that you can catch back up where we are. But if, if you go there, you can see the series. And I made the uh, folder Bible studies public. So anybody can go in there and watch them. I would encourage you to go in there and, um, and go back to the beginning of the Doctrine of Salvation and watch those other ones. And it will catch you up. While you're there, you might, you're going to find some other stuff. That's in there too, like the fall of man. Um, I don't have the doctrine of God in there, but it's some good stuff in there that you can see. Amen. Mm -hmm. I would highly encourage you to go back and watch those so you can catch up to speed uh, to where they are. Amen. Y'all yeah. ready to walk? Yes, sir. We thank God for our new brother. Uh, brother Black got up and read uh, and, and gave us Amen. a prayer Amen. as, as uh, Deacon and Trainee Lorenzo Green offered up the scripture. Amen. Amen. Looking forward Amen. to Mr. Baldwin jumping in here and getting a piece of this as well. Amen. 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 So thank y'all for opening it up uh, for us. Amen. You ain't going to see it over here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we're thankful. We ended up last week, did we um, cover Acts? We stopped at Romans, am I right? Last week, is that where we ended off? We, yeah, well, we're going to do Romans this week. Okay, so we went through Acts, and I think we covered it pretty good, that receiving salvation means we must turn from our sins. Now, that one was, um, was powerful because where it said that you must repent, if, 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 if you're perfect, if there's nothing wrong with you, if you have no issues, you can't repent, right? And we talked about that uh, verbatim. So if, if, if you got it all together and you don't do no wrong, you don't sin, you're perfect. There's no need for you to repent. All I know is I have to repent. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have repented. And... Um, I'm forever praying to the Lord, asking for forgiveness. Because I may have done something, I don't know I did it. Amen. 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 Because I know I'm not perfect. Amen. 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 Anybody else in the house Amen. with me on that? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm trying to tell you. So join me, if you will, Romans chapter 6. We're talking about the doctrine of salvation. Amen. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. It says verse 23, but y'all know we are context kind of folk. So let's see how far back we want to go. But it's one of my favorite verses. Amen. One of my favorite verses. Hmm. Let's just read verse 23 because there's so much in here. Everybody got it? Amen. 
Go back and watch those other ones in the folder, Bible studies under the doctrine of salvation, and, and it'll line you up what we've already covered. This, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, sums it up. Amen? Y'all ready? Amen. I'm trying to build up the hype around this verse, right? Because <laughs> it says so much. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready? Here we go. For the wages of sin is death. death. Wages means what? You got to work for it. Amen. Y'all think about all this stuff we do. When we sin it. I'm just going to take my time with this verse. Right? I want y'all to really think about that. When you sin it. Takes work don't it? Anybody ever sinned in here? Y'all yeah. yeah. think about that. The wages of sin. Is that. How hard did you have to work at doing that? It was easy to do, of course. But you always got to do this and do this and do this. It's always some other stuff because you got to cover up that track. Because you had to be this over there in the first place. So you got to cover it up, right? Yeah. Takes work. For the wages of sin is death. Going back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. You may eat from freely. You may eat freely. You may eat freely from every tree that is in the garden. But of that tree, don't eat from it. If you do, you shall surely sure die. <laughs> and if he ate from it, what is that called? Sin. Yes. So now that he did it, there is a penalty that the offender has to pay. And that penalty is what? Death. Because Death. God said, if you eat from it, y'all, you shall surely die. So before I go on with the rest of verse 23, has anybody here, virtually or in person, ever done anything worse than eat something you ain't had no business? Yes, sir. And if it's a simple act of eating something God told him not to eat, condemned everybody born after him. Don't come throwing up in my face what I did. Because we all did something. Right? So, if Adam ate something he wasn't supposed to, that got him a penalty of death and passed it on to all of us, what about your sin? Somebody can talk to me if you want to. What about your sin? Is one greater than another? Huh. No. <laughs> he said is one greater than another. He ate something and con not only condemned himself, but condemned us too. Which means all of us are under the penalty of death. I don't care how much you go to church. I don't care how many songs you sang in the choir stand. I don't care how many prayers you lifted up during devotional service. I don't care how many sermons you preach. You can be sinning while praying. Yep. Amen. You can be Come sinning on. while preaching. Come on. Mm -hmm. My mama used to tell me, oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. And you got a problem if you do something, you sin, and want to blame it on somebody else and act like you a victim. Boy, you sinning hard. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. You, you trying to get it off of you. Uh-huh. It was uh, Like people don't know no better. Adam we know you did it. Adam did the same thing. Yeah, you did it. You got it. We learned from the best, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gave it to me. That's what you said. Amen, y'all. Amen. Man. No, you wanted that woman. Tell me that woman you gave. <laughs> the woman you gave. You know you wanted that woman. She was fine until you messed up. Now you want to blame her. Somebody help me. Come on, Bishop. All right. For the wages of sin is death. But, I love that when it's in the Bible because you don't know where you're going. But the free gift. Y'all, y'all, did y'all see it? The free gift. The free, free gift. gift. Of who? Free gift of God. Who, who gives it? God. Don't come running up in here like Bishop can save you. I can't. Okay. I need salvation just like you. Okay. Amen. Amen, Bishop. But the free gift of God is eternal, eternal life, life through Christ Jesus our oh, Lord, Lord. Which means the only way out of the penalty of death is from God giving it to us. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. Amen. Amen. Just because you go to church don't mean you're going. Come on now. Come on. That ain't going to get you there. Y'all need to get this syllabus here so we can go all the way over it so we can be clear. Um, because, man, you know, we've been taught some crazy stuff in church. Let yeah. truth be told, y'all. I'm sorry. Yeah. But... That's the way it is. Amen. So simply, salvation cannot be earned. It is a gift of God. Amen. 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 Let's go, let's go a couple of chapters over to chapter 10 in Romans. something in Romans 11. When God told Elijah, he told that story. You ain't done one. It's right there in Romans 11. He said, I got 7,000 of them that ain't, ain't bowed to Baal. Lord have mercy. If the writers of the Bible use cross-referencing, why can't we? It's right there. Just read Romans 11. It's right there. He tells the story. Amen. We supposed to be in 10, and I got, I got, I got caught there. Amen. Romans 10, verses 8 through 10. Amen. Amen. Woo. And this is the one that we use when folks join the church to explain salvation. Romans 10 is the blueprint. Amen? Okay. I'm trying to see if I should go back. Huh. i tell you what. For We're going to read verses 8 through 10. You all go back and read from 1 through 10. Amen? Now, let's go over it. Amen? Let's go to verse 1, but y'all keep in mind that we're coming, we're, we're reaching the point of what it says in verse 8 through 10. Amen? So here's Paul talking. Uh, to the church in Rome. And, and and if you all notice, Romans has the most doctrine mm -hmm. of any other of any of his other letters. Why is that? Because you can give meat to those with teeth. Some other folk need to keep drinking milk, but evidently they were strong enough to receive strong doctrine. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Here's Paul. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and prayer to God 
is for the people of Israel to be saved. Amen. And that's God's desire for all of us to be saved. Amen. Because um, I think we ran into it in John previously where he said, uh, for God desires that all of us be saved. He said that. Amen. So, um, verse 2. I know what enthusiasm they have for God. King James says the zeal of God. But it is misdirected zeal. That's what Paul had. He thought he was doing the right thing by persecuting the church. But he, so when he's speaking here, he's speaking from experience. Right. Mm -hmm. he, for I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. And I want y'all to think about that. What are you doing in church? Is it misdirected? <laughs> All right. Just something for us to think about because we actually think sometimes we're doing the right thing when we rebuke people for coming to church that don't dress like us. Come on. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yeah. Come in here with alcohol on your breath. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to go. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is what it needs to be. Y'all in here. All right. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. For they don't understand, wow, God's way of making people right with himself. You can't do it. All right. Refusing to accept God's way. Watch this. They cling to their own way of getting right with God. By trying to keep the law. Hmm. You can't dress like that. You can't come in here like that. You got to raise the Baptist finger to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were in Mississippi. And I think it was Lorenzo. Well, I told him, go in the room. The, the overseers were meeting. And I said, go in there and get my cards. <laughs> Lorenzo was like, but they meet in there. I say, go in there with the Baptist finger up. Nobody will pay you any money. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? Yes, he went in there. And you know, we don't just raise the finger. We duck down <laughs> and we tip in there. That's what he did. And when he got them cards and came right back out, nobody paid you no money. It worked, didn't it? <laughs> you got to know the church, y'all. You got to know the church. All right. He says, for Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. That was to bring him in to pay the penalty that we owe each debt. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. But you got to believe. All that believe. Not that tradition. Amen. There was an email that came out today about somebody that said, we got a baptistry we want to give for free. I was like, I jumped on the phone and called them. And um, they built a new church and they want to give the baptistry away in there. I said, oh, I was looking for a portable baptistry. Oh, you could use it for that. I said, no, we're going to Jenny Springs. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's just a little side note there, y'all. Okay, beginning in verse 5. We find that salvation is for everyone. everyone. All right? Mm -hmm. So, for Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all his commands. Pause. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause. Who in here, who on the phone, who on the live stream can keep all ten commandments? I can't do it. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Can any of you keep all ten commandments? No, sir. I can't. Can I read verse five again? For Moses writes that writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all his commands, and that's what we think. Just because we go to church. You gotta have communion every first Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, don't put no cup on the communion table. Mm -hmm. you gotta wear white. white. Got to wear your white. Mm -hmm. Y'all ladies got to wear that darling. Right? Lord, they don't have darling. Amen. Tell your story. <laughs> Amen. But faith's way, he said faith's way, of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven. To bring Christ down to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead. To bring Christ back to life again. 
here we go, verse 8. This is where we're coming from, but to get the context of it, we had to read verses 1 through 7. He says, in fact, it said, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. Now, somebody tell me where that is. Somebody tell me where that is. Where, did, where is that quote? About faith. That what we just read, because that is a direct cross-reference. That is a direct quote from somewhere else in the Bible, probably the Old Testament. Where? Is that previously said? I think I heard you hit it. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 30 verses 14. 12 through 14. Cross-referencing at his best. Yep. If Paul uses it, a writer of 13 books, why can't we? Paul quoted Deuteronomy <coughs> chapter 30, verses 12 through 14. He said, in fact, it said, not what he thinks, but what God said in the book of Deuteronomy, the second book of the law. The message is very close at hand. Y'all watch this now. Watch me now. Very close at hand. Y'all need to watch me now. Y'all need to watch me. Get your head out your Bible for a minute. And y'all need to watch me. Amen. He said the message, the message, the message is very close at hand. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Thank y'all for watching. It is on your lips. Oh, come on. In your heart. And in your heart. Mm -hmm. What's in your heart? Mm -hmm. What's in your heart comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Amen, Bishop. And he said, and that message is the very message about faith that we preach. And verse 9 is going to help break it down. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Come on. If you openly declare <clears throat> from your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Lord. and believe in yeah. your heart that God raised him from the dead, to pay the penalty that you owe, that's mine. That's it. You will be saved. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. It ain't got Real. nothing to do with yeah, you. Uh -huh. Ain't got nothing to do with what you do. Mm -hmm. Ain't got nothing to do with that prayer you pray. Unless you pray in that. Y'all mm -hmm. understand? Come on now. Ain't got nothing to do with how you tore the church up when you preached on Sunday. Because <laughs> we found out on Sunday that that message ain't yours. If it's coming from here, it's God's message. All right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh-oh. For it is by believing mm -hmm. in your heart. heart that you are made right it's with right God. God. And it is by openly declaring mm -hmm. from your mouth anyone who trusts in him Anyone. will never be disgraced. Mm -hmm. When I'm oh, talking Jesus about Christ. salvation, when somebody walks the aisle and joins the church, I don't say, you been baptized? <laughs> <Right. laughs> Y'all know who in here been told that. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth. Yeah, One, right two. Right mm -hmm. Y'all did because y'all joined it here. Amen. I wasn't told that, but I've seen it told. And you go into the water thinking you say. Or you went to the water and thought you were saved, and you tell him, I'm coming under Christian experience. <laughs> Grandfather didn't know. They were told they were saved. Not knowing, 
you in the movie Sunday Morning Rapture and everybody else got raptured and you still sitting in the pew. Why? That's why. Because you wasn't led right. Well, you went and done it and wasn't understanding what was going on when you done it, but you was doing it just for Yeah. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's what they was Y'all, we got to lead people right. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know it, go to Romans 10. Let Paul do it. Amen. Amen. Are y'all clear Amen. here? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Here we go again. Here's another one. So in Romans 10, verse 8 through 10, re receiving salvation, watch this, y'all, is simple and personal. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to do all of that stuff. Mm. You want, y all, y all, y all, look, y'all want to be saved? Yeah. You want to know what you got to do? Ask God. All right. Ask him. It's that simple and it's that personal. Mm. You ain't got to say ten our fathers and three Hail Marys. Mm. <laughs> I ain't picking on nobody. I'm just saying, y'all. Yeah, we we yeah, make it so that we, we we got the we got the I, I got the, I got to serve the homeless and the hungry. That's a result of your salvation, but that ain't gonna get you there. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. Receiving salvation is simple and personal. Join me, please. The book of Ephesians. One of the prison epistles. Got Galatians. Ephesians, Colossians, all of them, the prison epistles. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 9, where it talks about we are made alive with Christ. Amen. This is a good one, y'all. This is a good one. Chapter Wait for everybody to get that. Ephesians two. chapter 2. Verses 1 through 9. Amen, y'all? Amen. Y'all enjoying this so far? Amen. Do we have a 7 o'clock time check? 6.59. 6.59. Yeah, they got the clock right back there today. Come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> the battery going to say, yeah, I did you last week, but you're going to have to put me another one in there this week. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Made alive with Christ. Y'all ready? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. Let's stop for a minute there. Or in your, as Deacon Ball says, your BC days. Before your conversion. Before you walk down crying. Amen. 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 I ain't saying we still don't sin, but now we know. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to do my best. Uh -huh. Them days when you deliberately did stuff. Yeah. I, I'm just telling you the truth. I was one of them. I'm not a, I, I deliberately know. did knew what I was doing. <laughs> okay, <man. laughs> but it was fun. Oh yeah. yeah. I liked it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm telling on myself so I won't tell on y'all. Some of y'all was with me. <laughs> and sometimes I left y'all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was leaving and you was coming. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh -huh. those days, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like the rest of the world. Obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. <clears throat> and you want to know who's behind that stuff? That's who's behind it. 
But, okay, I got to stop here for a minute because I have a saying. I say all the time. Just because you can put a name and a face to it doesn't make it any less sin than it is. In other words, what I'm saying is just because you can point a finger at somebody. I had somebody call on me trying to get me removed from the bishopric. Trying to tell on me. Saying, I got evidence of what he's doing. No, you don't. <laughs> but that's what they said. I got evidence. Nobody would listen to him. Now y'all tell me who was behind that. That stuff you going through right now, while you can point at who, call his name or their name, who is behind it? And we waste all our time getting mad at some folk when, when all they're doing is being obedient to their master. That's a quote there, y'all. That's a quote there. That's a quote there. Minister and Training Linda, you ought to put that in the comments right there. Anybody, somebody need to see it. You spending all your time and energy and resources mad at somebody because you can see what they're doing, you can hear what they're saying, but all they're doing is being obedient to their master. I'm going to say this again. I'm trying to move on. Satan is so deceptive Ooh, come on. that he'll do something or say something and you'll think it's God. Pause for the call. Y'all need to sit on that for a minute. So he's behind it. That don't mean I'm getting away scot-free with it because I'm being disobedient. While you are being obedient. Did y'all catch that? You're being disobedient while you're being obedient. You're being disobedient to the Lord while you're being obedient to your master. Satan. If you don't spend time with God, Satan will spend time with you. That's it. Come on and now. you will think it's God. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Amen, Bishop. Mm. We can Holy Ghost dance right now. Come on. <laughs> okay. People discount this is the time that takes more than heaven. I mean, we know the word better than people know. Yeah, that. oh, yeah. He knows God's mannerisms. Mm -hmm. He knows he can move. What do you want to be like? He knows his thoughts, all of that. So why wouldn't he be able to move? And he was the worship leader. Yeah, yeah, he was the worship now leader. Now you know why we dance all the time in church. Mm -hmm. We were taught by the best. I'm going to keep moving because I don't want nobody mad because they're saying, I ain't saying don't dance. I ain't say that. But you got to know who you dancing with. Mm -hmm. Your partner makes a difference. That's right. Amen. Amen. So I got to read verse 2 all over again because I left off piece because I stopped right there because I saw something. <laughs> you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world. Amen. Obeying the yeah. devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Mm -hmm. Don't get mad at me because it's right there. That's right. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. I don't care if you're in church or out. That's right there. It's going to tell you. All you got to do is watch a person long enough, and they will be revealed for who they are and who they follow. Whether they know who it is or not, all you got to do is get, y'all, quit getting mad at folk. Just watch them. Just wait. Have a little patience. If they'll show up after a while. That's why you got the, the, the wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, and after know. a while, that, that, that wool gets hot. And they get the itching and scratching and they got to come out. 
that's, that's cool. when they all oh, huh. I knew I'd wait for a while and that kid get to get his son. Yeah. Hey. That was the house. Amen. Verse 3. All of us used to live that way. Is this correct? This is Paul saying it. Is this true? Yes, sir. Following the passionate desires and inclinations of our what? Sinful nature. We were born with it. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Paul said that. But God, I love it. But if anybody got a got a but God story? Mm, yeah. My God. But God, everything. What, God, everything. what you yeah. say? <laughs> <laughs> but God is so rich in mercy, and He loved us so, so much, much that Ooh, even God. though we were dead because of our sins, <laughs> He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Praise God, somebody. Praise For he raised Jesus. us from the dead along with Christ Ooh. and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Jesus. All because he hung in our place. Ooh, so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Verse 8, y'all. Come on, somebody. Come on. God saved you by his grace. Thank you for your grace, When? When you believe. When you believe. When you were born again. Amen. Amen. Jesus was telling Nicodemus this. And you can't take credit for this. Quit bragging about they came to church because of me. Come no. On. Come on. Right? Come on now. You just did what you were supposed to do. Yeah. But you can't save a, a cockroach <laughs> from a can of rain. <laughs> you walk in that rain, you going to be choking. <laughs> Raise God, somebody. <laughs> God saved you by his grace when you believe, and you can't take credit for this. Why? Because it is a gift from God. You don't have to earn it. And ask him for it. Verse 9. Ooh, verse Salvation nine is, is not a reward but for the good, good things, things we have done. done. So it's none of us can boast about it. Woo! Yeah. Might as well throw in verse 10. Right. For we are God's masterpiece, yeah. molded by it's his own hand, mm -hmm. breathed into us the breath of life with his own living breath. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Yes, he has is. created us anew. In Christ Jesus, because the part that was molded got tainted. So we can do the good things he planned for us. Long ago. Long ago. Long ago. Before you became a figment of your daddy's imagination. God is a good God. Yeah. Yes, he is. Y'all remember that song? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all send me a love offer and I'll sing it for you. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all say? Y'all be throwing it back. Nah, man, nah. Give me my money back. <laughs> Amen. So here's the thing. Salvation is by God's grace Great. Thank you, alone. Mm -hmm. You can't earn that. It ain't even a reward for you. It is God's grace that saves. Thank you for your grace, Father. And all you got to do is Thank ask you, him. Jesus. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And it's that personal. 
You don't need me to get it. I need to lead you there. That's yeah, it. That's my job. Is to lead you there. But I can't lead you if I don't know how to follow. Come on. Amen, Bishop. And I gotta know who I'm leading you to. Yeah, or else I'm gonna lead you to somebody else. Yeah. 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 Or who knows me. Yeah. Somebody shout glory real quick and I'm gonna yeah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise Thank the Lord, somebody. Praise Thank the Lord. Lord. Salvation is by God's grace alone. alone. Next book over. Colossians. Colossians. Chapter 1. Verse 13 and 14. <laughs> I'm, we, we wait on everybody here y'all got it verse 13 and 14 in Colossians chapter 1 amen, amen. amen. let me know y'all got it y'all got it yeah. amen. The Lord. <laughs> here we go for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness which means that's where we were, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why would we need to be rescued if we weren't there? Right. Whether you were in church or not. Come on. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Transferred us. Transferred us. Thank you, Lord. Into the kingdom mm -hmm. of his dear son. Watch this, verse 14. Who purchased our freedom and forgave our sin. That's a wrap. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, somebody. First Peter. I love First Peter. Going toward the back, y'all. First Peter. First Peter. Chapter 1. This is another one of my favorites. Verses 18 and 19. One of my favorites. Oh, God. Oh, God. I think we need to read 17 just to show us that. Okay. One of the pastors that joined us in um, Macomb, Mississippi said, and y'all didn't have people escort y'all in the room. Huh. He said that he noticed that because that's what he's seen and I've seen it, you've seen it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, Deacon Ball and Deacon Lorenzo, I need y'all, yeah. But I don't need no umbrella help for them. <laughs> Amen. 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 And if I'm preaching, don't come up there blabbing me with no towel. I can do that myself. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> see y'all laughing, but that happened. I see that happening. Yeah. Yeah. I said that to say verse 17. Okay. Amen. That's why I said that. Amen. Okay. Verse 17 says this, and did, did what I just said. Mm. And remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no, no faith. faith. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. I'm in the number just like y'all. Mm -hmm. I just have 
a job to teach y'all, to equip y'all, yes, yes. to be empowered in Christ Jesus. Amen. Y'all, you understand? Amen. But he don't favor me no more than you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So if I get up here teaching y'all some crazy stuff, I'm going to be judged for it. And be re rewarded for what I do right. Oh, yeah. And I'm always striving to be better every day. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. Which means I know I'm going to leave here one day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now we can get to verse 18 and 19. Y'all ready? Ready. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you. From the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. Mm -hmm. The minute you was born, you needed to be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. Mm -hmm. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless, spotless. Lamb oh of God. God. Because the penalty that mm -hmm. you owe is death. And mm -hmm. Christ, or oh, let me put it this way. God came down in the person of Jesus Christ to pay that penalty of death for you. So that you will never die. Your body may quit breathing, but yet you shall live. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you. I got 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I want to read stuff, about salvation, and we're going to cut it off for tonight. And when we come back next week, we're going to talk about salvation in the Old Testament. Okay. Amen. All right. and, and what I want y'all to see when we come back next week about salvation in the Old Testament, we want to see salvation then, but it's an example of what Christ did. And, and 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 the Lord God, he revealed it throughout the pages of Scripture. So we're going to look at it from the Old Testament. When we're done there, we'll go to the New. Amen? Amen? So let's talk about salvation for a minute. Biblically, one of the central messages of the Bible. Scripture reveals God, but it also reveals his plan for the human race. That of salvation. In that sense, salvation is the theme of both the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's the theme of both. Amen. Amen. Because of the, and I've talked about this for a few weeks now, because of the progressive nature of revelation, man sees different aspects of God's plan. In other words, progressive revelation is he gives it to us as we can take it. He ain't going to give it all to you one time. Right. You won't understand. Right. Mm -hmm. But the kernel truth of salvation is present throughout the writings of the Bible. God is a God of salvation desiring that all humankind repent and be saved. Are we clear? Let's look at a couple examples. And the scriptural basis for this entire study is coming from 1 Timothy. But let's look at Brother Ezekiel first. Ezekiel. Chapter 18. Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. This is in the prophets section. Amen? Amen. Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of them. Y'all got me? Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 18. Verse 32. It's the last verse of Ezekiel 18. Let me know when you got it. If you're still looking and you need your table of contents, cool. We don't leave nobody. Excuse my country speech. 
I know better. Y'all ready for it? Look like everybody quit looking. Y'all good. Y'all some bad folk. Y'all ready? This is what God says. Y'all ready for this? Yes. Yes. Y'all ready? Somebody need to hear this. Those of you who said, why did God let this happen? Why is God punishing me? Why has God abandoned me? I can't serve a God like that. For those that say that, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32. I don't want you to die. Who said it? Says the sovereign Lord. I, I, I don't know. I don't know somebody. God says, I don't want you to die. Then he says this. Turn back and live. What does turn back mean? It means repent. Why do you need to repent? Because God don't want us to die. Thank you, Lord. He ain't talking about one of the funeral directors coming in here to roll us out. He ain't talking about that. Because if there's eternal life, there's eternal death. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. Now, let's go back to, I had to get an old one to get to a new one. First Timothy. Chapter 2. This is the basis of this, the theme of this whole, this is the scripture reference of this doctrine of salvation. Verse 3 and 4. Three or four. First Timothy, chapter two. And if you ever get lost, it's right there on your syllabus. First Timothy, chapter two. Y'all, we want three and four, but I'm gonna read one through four. Amen? Amen? And we're going to wrap it up and call it a night. My foot says sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen? You got it? Second, first, first Timothy chapter 2. Beginning in verse 1. But remember, keep in mind, we want verse 3 or 4. All right? So I'll stop there and let you know. Here's where we're going. All right? Y'all ready? Amen. Paul says this to Timothy. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Now, you might do that. Now, it's up to them to receive it or not, right? Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Now we're ready for verse 3 and 4. This is good and pleases God, our what? Savior. Our Savior. Here we go. Who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth? Amen. This is good. And pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. I'm not going to go into the doctrine of election because that is one of the most confusing doctrines that people just, what do you think that well, God, he, he chooses who he wants to save? God knows who will and who won't. Y'all with me here? Mm -hmm. Why, why would God say, I want everyone to be saved, but, they, but I'm going to only pick you and not you? Okay. Right. Don't make sense. Makes no make sense. sense at all. So I'm not going to jump into the doctrine of election, but I will teach that. Okay. We got some new folks here. I think after this is over, we're going to shift real quick.
and go to How to Study the Bible. They haven't done it this year. We got some new folk. Amen. We want to teach y'all how to get it. Conducted Bible study. Amen. Now, is this salvation clearer to us? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Is it clearer to us? Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments, concerns? I hear conference call is quiet. In the room, everybody's content. I pray that you are. Call us, message us, talk to us. Want to hear from you, and we will come back and answer all your questions, your comments, and your concerns. Y'all hang on for the closing prayer and benediction so we can leave right. Amen, y'all? Amen. I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Not even if you try. Amen. See you next week. For she is shining the light on us so we can better understand salvation and how to lead someone to salvation. When it comes time, dear Heavenly Father, let us not be scared to open up our mouth and lead someone to salvation. Amen? Amen. 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 May the words of my mouth, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable within thy sight, be acceptable within thy sight. O Lord, O Lord, my strength, my strength, and my redeemer, and my redeemer, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Father. Get us home safe, Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes. All right, everybody that's in here, we have a mayoral candidate coming Sunday. So, David Ariola will be here. Candidate for mayor. So, y'all, everybody that can be here so we can hear this man. Amen, y'all? Amen. David Ariola. Wait a minute. That's just something.